I learned about Emily Henry in March of this year and it was only because my wife Abigail told me that at one time she was like the Taylor Swift of romance novels. So naturally I was like, I should read all of her books and see if I liked it. I personally don't really read romance novels, but at the same time she was a New York Times bestselling author and she had a new book that was releasing in April. So my goal was to read all of her books review each of them, then read Funny Story when that was released in April, and then rank all of them from favorite to least favorite. At least that was their original plan. When it comes to reading, I consider myself a super, super, super casual reader, as in I'm not a speed reader, and I'll read a series or book or two for about two months, not read a book for about four to five months, and then start reading again. I mean, I have a Goodreads account that I don't really keep updated. I use Libby, I have a Kindle, and I actually enjoy reading, but I also enjoy a lot of other things that I give more of my time to. And I usually tend to stick to two genres. The first one is the dystopian type of book like the Ark of the Side series by Neil Shusterman, the other being biographies or autobiographies. I'll usually read a series and then read a biography and then I'll just switch back and forth. Abigail, on the other hand, reads different types of books and has a collection that's always growing. This is actually one of her bookshelves behind me. She also has an Instagram account if you wanna follow her reading journey. But here's my little collection of books and here are hers. Now, some of these do overlap as in there are some books that we both like. I personally like young adult type of books because they tend to be easy reads. And for me, they allow my mind to escape whatever is going on because the reality is we're both parents. We both have full time jobs and we have other hobbies that steal our attention. I do think reading all of these books will be a different experience for me because to me, it's kind of just like reading the book of a rom-com movie that I'm watching, but I'm trying to broaden my horizon. I'll also admit that every time we go to the bookstore, I make fun of how a lot of book covers for romance novels look similar to each other, but that same concept can technically be applied to other genres, videos, or even music. I personally will be reading the books in these three formats, physical copies, eBooks, and audiobooks. Although I do know some people are like super, super anti-audiobook because it's technically not reading, but it, it is what it is. I think Abigail had Beach read through like her book of the month subscription, but either way, the first step was to just get all of the books. Also, I just want to apologize in advance if I accidentally spoil something, I'm going to try not to, but some of these books have been out for a while, so hopefully you've had a chance to read some. <music> I had to go to Vegas for work and I figured that since I was traveling, it'd be the perfect time to get some reading done. I was wrong. I mean, I did, but not as much as I wanted to. I read the first couple of chapters and decided to listen to the audiobook as I was driving. I know I shouldn't probably be doing this while I'm driving, but I want to get all of this out of my head before I forget because I still have like uh, an hour and a half, two hours to drive or whatever. But anyway, first seven chapters, I mean, it's a romance book. So like as soon as old Gus Gus came on the scene, I was like, that they're going to fall in love. I, I just know it. I mean, that's just what it is. But so far, I think old Pete is out here just trying to match make, not even telling them about the book that the book club was for. Pete seems like the real MVP right now. As I was waiting on my flight to leave to go home, I decided to read one more chapter, but that was shortly. I mean, chapter 13 was only one page and one sentence. Now we're going to take a time jump of four months to today. I'm still on Beach Read and Funny Story has been out for a while and most people have read it. So my original goal was missed. I also broke my foot, so I'm kind of forced to stay still for a while. But I'm still determined to stay focused and experience these books for the first time. And one of the ways that I'm staying focused is by using these mental performance shots by Magic Mind. I've been taking them for about two, maybe three weeks now. And honestly, the biggest difference that I feel is that I feel more focused when it comes to performing a task or I don't feel as tired like later in the day when you get that 2 30 3 o'clock feeling but don't get it twisted it's not a caffeine shot it's just something that you add to your daily routine or you just take it right before you're trying to focus on something it takes a couple days to kick in before you start feeling the effects and it's all about mental performance and it's 100 percent safe if you want to try it for yourself head on over to magicmind.com backslash rally use the code rally 20 and it'll knock off some of that price for you so i had a plan to finish beach read within two days so even though i usually divide it by how many chapters i have left i did page numbers instead and at this moment in time, I was good if I read 84 pages each day. So I was trying to fit in reading whenever I could, like while my son was napping, for example. And Abigail also inspired me to start carrying the book and my Kindle with me. I was gonna try to get some reading done while I was at the doctor um, waiting for them to call my name, but they literally took them like three minutes. I didn't even get to read a page. This is like the first time I'm seeing my foot in like 10, maybe 11 days. And I'm basically gonna figure out if I can either put any weight on it or if I can do other things like driving or even standing up in the shower even. I actually am making progress as far as recovery goes, but for right now, I still can't walk yet. I was at the point where I want to know like different details about certain things like Gus's previous marriage or Sonia or Sonia, whatever her name is and how she fits into all this. But chapter 24, man, I was reading that and I was like, ooh, she's there. And then when January got home and I was like, ooh, 
And then of course, like I had to read the next chapter. And as I got to the last chapter, I honestly didn't know how it would end because in my mind, you had the perfect kind of expected dancing in the rain, I choose you kind of thing. But at the same time, I was like, bruh, Gus, stop dancing around the conversation that you had about Naomi and just say what you're trying to say, man. After I read the last chapter, I was kind of the ending that I expected but at the same time because I don't know what type of author Emily Henry is. It could have gone any way, to be honest. But I will say my favorite quotes from this book were in chapter 17 when Gus said, not believing in something doesn't stop you from wanting it if you're not careful. And in chapter 23 when Gus also said, when you love someone, you want to make this world look different for them to give all the ugly stuff meaning and amplify the good. And just for fun, my favorite characters were Gus, January, and Pete. And shout out Pete because she's basically the one that kind of started or restarted all this. I'd give Beach Read a solid four out of five. Now I have no experience with romance novels, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this book compares to the rest of her books and if that rating will change for me. I know I shouldn't do this, but if I were to guess the plot of this book based off the title alone, I would say that it's about a woman that meets someone on vacation and they fall in love. Okay, maybe that's a general consensus, or maybe that's just me, or maybe that's what Emily Henry wants you to think. To try and read this as effectively as possible, I was doing some quick maths and I figured out that if I could read 180 pages each day, I could finish it in two days. After I read the prologue, I couldn't figure out if Alex and Poppy were together or if they were just like friend zoning each other, Alex more so than Poppy. As I read, I obviously became aware of the situation and I ain't gonna lie because at first I was trying to figure out two things about this book. The first thing being, I was wondering if these books were connected or if they were a series. And the second thing, if they're not connected in any way, how easy would it be for me to shift from the story and the characters of Beach Read to a brand new adventure with the same genre? I personally like to switch up the genres when it comes to TV shows and movies. And so like, I assume that the same would apply with reading, but I was already sucked into this story because I just wanted to know what happened in Croatia. <laughs> I now had the help of the audiobook and utilized that as I was getting some things done around the house. I also wanted to get it because I knew that I would end up in the car soon. Woo! I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am to drive right now. I haven't driven since I broke my foot. And yes, I still have my boot on, but it's my left foot. To me, audiobooks are best when you're driving. It's kind of like listening to a podcast. I mean, yes, it's, it's good for doing stuff around the house as well, but when you're driving, if you don't want to listen to music, just pop on an audiobook, pop on a podcast or just ride in silence. I do think if I was like normally going into work and all that, I was I would be listening to the audiobooks more often and I would've probably gotten through the books as, like quicker. But there's just something about holding a physical book and just reading something. Like one thing I realized with the audiobooks specifically is like it's harder to see those quotes that stand out to you or those lines in the book that stand out to you because you're just hearing it and it's easy to kind of just let the, the quote or the line go by just one ear out the other. Figure since I started a new book, time to go get a new look. Going to see my girl Didi at Diamond Cuts. I'm, that was bad. I'm going to get my hair retwisted and I've had this scheduled for a while. I could have technically just listened to the audiobook while sitting under the dryer, but I had a feeling that I would have been easily distracted by everything that was going on. It was good to see that I was one fourth of the way through the book though. Woo! Look at your boy. Mm, check me out. Uh, I don't even know what you can see. Now I just got to fix all this. I'm probably going to shave it all off. When I got to chapter 11, I was like, hey, shout out Beach Reef. But I felt like I had a good flow going and actually made my goal of reading half of the book in a day. And the next morning was one of those like false fall mornings, as in here in North Carolina, it was cool enough and not as humid in the early morning to actually sit outside on our back porch. Let's be honest though, it'll be back to the summer heat and humidity in no time. As I became more invested in the story of Alex and Poppy, I realized that I wanted to know more of the this summer stories instead of the flashback stories, even though I knew that the flashback stories would help clarify a lot of things like what happened in Croatia, for example. If I had to guess, I probably used the audiobook for about 20% of this book because I'm not gonna lie, I actually just enjoyed reading it. But overall, after I finished the book, I felt like I was in like a little roller coaster because sometimes I'd be like, hey, let's go. And then very shortly after I was like, well, dang. And then I felt like Poppy's big speech at the end was like a mic drop. And I'd say that overall, I would give this book a 4.5 out of five. I know a lot of books do this, but I enjoy the mini stories surrounding the overall story. And uh, do you like, like, do you prefer the flashback stories, like the, the present and then flashback? And do you like that switch up or would you prefer just to have all the information at the beginning or whatever time and then read the present day? Like, what's your preference? If I had to pick a quote from this book that I actually liked, uh, they were both from chapter one. Uh, the first one being when Poppy and Rachel were talking, and I think Rachel said, this is a feed of curated imagery meant to make you pine for a life that doesn't exist. I get paid for this, probably because it's so true, <laughs> if you think about it. 
The other being when Poppy said, my life turned out how I hoped it would and now I just miss wanting something. Because it's like a realization and it's also kind of sad at the same point. My favorite characters, there was Poppy, Alex, and then Rachel. Um, even though it was mainly Poppy and Alex throughout the entire book. I will say I like Poppy more than our girl January, but I don't know how she's gonna compare to the rest of the main characters in the rest of the books. The first thing I'll say about book lovers is that I like how in the prologue, it was basically making fun of like your average Hallmark Christmas movie. And I honestly felt like I was on a roll. So I took some magic mind to zone in on reading, but uh, reality hit me because you know, I still gotta work, still gotta do my job. But I'll say that's where the audiobook came in clutch. Mainly because while I was reading this book, we had probably our busiest days of the week and other random things like trying to fix some car problems. So all in all, I would say I listened to about 40 to 50% of this book and I also didn't have it on Kindle. And the main advantage of having it on my Kindle is that I can read it at night without having to turn a light on and potentially waking Abigail up. My initial thought as I was reading was, what is going on with Libby? Because even though there was like the main love story developing, I was wondering what was going on between Libby and Brendan. And then eventually I was like, Charlie's sister is the real villain in all of this. And then I was hit with the thought, come on Libby. And last but not least, I had another shout out beach read moment. As I approached the end, I was wondering where each main character would end up, probably more so than the other two books. Well, maybe, the same as like people we meet on vacation. But once it was revealed, I was like, spa! If you read the book, then you get that reference. Overall, I would give this book a four. I almost gave it like a 3.75 or something because it took me a while to get locked in. Some of that could have been due to my circumstances or my busyness, so I wasn't able to like jump right in and have that constant flow. But I'm not gonna lie, even though they made fun of it at the beginning of the book, it still had like that Hallmark Christmas vibe, just with a twist. One of my favorite quotes comes from chapter 33, which says, because all those gaps between us are finally gone, but the impact of the collision has shaken every last remnant of the ice loose, leaving nothing but a soft, pulpy tenderness. Which is just a good reminder to have those tough conversations even when you don't want to, because it'll be worth it in the long term hopefully and easier said than done. My favorite characters from this book were Libby, Nora, and then Charlie. If you think about it, Libby is the real MVP because none of this would have happened if it wasn't for her. My main character ranking is now Poppy, January, then Nora. And I put January above Nora because I feel like she's more relatable, but then again, I'm not like a crazy busy career first New York worker. <laughs> With Happy Place, I was on a roll fresh off of Book Lovers. Luckily, Abigail already read this one a while ago, so we already had it on our Kindle account, but I did utilize the audiobook and the physical book too. And I'm not gonna lie, this book took me the longest to get fully invested in, unless funny stories just as bad. But I read throughout the day when I could, and when I'm reading, I tend to put on lo-fi music in the background, like lo-fi girl, lo-fi fruits, close on Sunday, or my old friend from college, Sunday Vibes. I know some people prefer to read in silence or read with different kind of music, classical music, whatever it is. But for me, that's just what works. And by the time I reached the theater scene or part or whatever, I was like, yeah, they're definitely gonna end up back together. I mean, I had that assumption from the beginning, but it kind of like sealed the deal now. So as I'm reading this, we ended up finding out that Abigail's car needed a whole new battery. So I listened to some of it while I was changing the battery. And uh, if my doctor sees this video, don't worry. I was really careful with my foot. I will say when Harriet read that text message at first, I was like, nah, it's not gonna be over. It's just gonna be the opposite. But dang. <laughs> then I felt like I was on the sideline when like Sabrina, Cleo, and Harriet were going at it. I was like, mmm. Then of course, dare I say it again. Shout out Beach Read and technically book lovers. Overall, I'd give Happy Place a solid 3.75 out of five, mainly because it took me a while to get into it, and that could be my own fault. Maybe I need to reread it, but I also didn't really like the ending as much compared to the others. I don't know why. Again, if I reread it, maybe I'll like it better but that's just what it is. Don't get me wrong, I still think it's a great book. And my favorite quote from this book is from the very first chapter where it says, my best friends taught me a new kind of quiet, the peaceful stillness of knowing one another so well, you don't need to fill the space and a new kind of loud noise as a celebration as the overflow of joy at being alive here now. And my favorite characters were Wynn, Harriet, and I honestly can't decide between Parth and Cleo. They both seem like fun people, but I probably lean more towards Cleo if I'm being honest. As far as the main character ranking goes, Harriet will slide right under Nora and we'll see where our last main character ends up. Peter, you suck. 
That's how I felt after the first couple chapters. So I understand that they have to make sure you see that it's on sale, but these stickers suck, especially when they take forever to come off. Then again, I kind of bought this book like four months ago and I'm just now taking it off, so that's kind of my own fault. For starters, I had no problem getting invested in this book and I know it's not gonna seem like I have a lot to say in comparison to the others, but I promise you I was invested in read and listened to this book faster than all the other ones. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out is in chapter 11, Daphne and Emily Henry, I guess in a roundabout way, says that audiobooks count as reading. Yeah. And once again, I'm, you're probably tired of me saying this, but shout out Beach Read. There's also shout out people we meet on vacation. But at this point, Beach Read's like, it's Beach Read. I mean, it's, it's the one. In all seriousness though, throughout this book, I had a moment where I was like, we should all try to be like Miles to a degree. I'm basically talking about when he was described as someone that was always curious about people when talking to them, which I think is something that we could all try because overall, it's always easier to talk about ourselves and doing that can make it seem like we're not interested in the person we're talking to. A couple thoughts while I was reading this book. Uh, for a while, I was thinking like, what, what are you doing, Julia? What's going on? And then when Homeboy shows up at the apartment, I was like, come on, man. Then eventually I got to the last chapter as I realized that this was the end of my Emily Henry reading journey. Now that is a funny story. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> what would you call this? Like the Emily Henry verse? No, the Emily Henry cinematic universe. Well, it's not cinematic. Overall, I'd give Funny Story a 4.5 um, out of five, and I won't give it a five because I don't have the paperback version. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I do want the paperback version because I need them all to match because that bothers me. But could you imagine being in this situation, moving in with your ex-fiance's new fiance's ex? That's crazy. Two of my favorite quotes from this book, one was from chapter eight, things go smoother if you don't let people get a rise out of you, AKA be slow to speak and quick to think. And the second one was in chapter 32, life short enough without us talking ourselves out of hope and trying to dodge every bad feeling. Sometimes you have to push through discomfort instead of running. My favorite characters were Daphne, Miles, then Ashley. And that leads me to my final rankings for main characters, which I have Poppy, January, Daphne, Nora, then Harriet. I know Poppy may seem a little crazy, maybe even a little immature for some people, but she's just so different than the rest. And so I think that's why she is at the top. I also think her sarcasm was like peak as far as compared to the other ones. Like her sarcasm was probably my favorite. I may be wrong, but I could see like Daphne and January being good friends, but I don't know if the others would mesh well with each other. I really do think that they would probably think Poppy is a little too much, but it's just cool after reading all these books to kind of see their backstory and even the backstory of the guys and how they are the way they are. Honestly, I just love the Easter eggs throughout each book, which I'm going to explain in about 10 seconds. So this is your warning to skip ahead to this timestamp just in case you don't want to see this. Okay, here we go. Beach Read is the first one. So that's the OG. There's nothing but newness. People we meet on vacation. Your boy Alex is reading a book by none other than Augustus Everett from Beach Read. What? Book lovers. Charlie was January's editor and he and Nora grabbed January's book together at Freeman's bookstore. Happy place. Parth picks up a book by a married couple that usually publishes separately, AKA January and Gus. Kimmy mentions that she went to the same university as them before they got together. Also, Wynn worked part-time at the same bookstore, AKA Freeman's, that Nora and her fam visited slash lived above. Wynn and Harriet also moved into that same apartment. They said it was haunted. Some people have a theory that it was haunted by Nora's mother, and the book that they found either belonged to Nora, Libby, or her mom. Funny story, Daphne goes to a book event for January, and when Daphne and Miles go kayaking, the couple is none other than Poppy and Alex using their alter egos, Gladys and Keith. And there's an extended beach read epilogue titled Layover that has January and Gus, Charlie and Nora, and Poppy and Alex. Woo, if I miss something, please let me know. After some thought though, I would honestly rank the books in this order. People we meet on vacation, funny story, beach read, book lovers, then happy place. I know you may disagree, but honestly for me, it could change. Then that might be through rereading or just kind of analyzing what I just read. Uh, and another way that it could be different for people is depending on how you relate to each character. Overall, I'll admit they're better than I expected. I mean, they're still predictable in the sense that like you could kind of just tell that they were gonna end up together or that it would be some kind of happy ending. But it's more than that. It's more than the main story. It's all about the journey that leads them there and the little side stories and side characters that kind of just make the story overall. It's all about how they get there and the character development. I feel like any guy that reads these books could relate to the male character to some degree. I, for example, relate to Wynn, just thinking off the top of my head because I know that I can be self-deprecating if I'm being honest. I feel like out of all of these, the easiest one to develop into a movie, I feel like would be Book Lovers. But I think out of the five, I would be most interested to see either people we meet on vacation and if they ever made one for Funny Story and Beach Read. I mean, I'd, I'd watch all of them, to be honest. <laughs> now that I've read all of these, doesn't mean that I'm just gonna be out here reading romance books. I gotta get back to my dystopian and biographies. 
but I think it overall just means that I'm a fan of Emily Henry. I like her writing style, even though I could care less for the like super, super intimate scenes, but I understand why it's needed. And I, for one, will be looking forward to her next book. It's kind of like the classic phrase that definitely fits this topic. Don't judge a book by its cover. Emily Henry Literary Universe. The Emmy Henny verse. <laughs> the M Hen verse. Nah. The E H U. The uh -hoo. <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Sunday morning views quickly turns to afternoons. It's like that I can barely go and catch it. Kinda how I feel with you.